Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to screen print your own t-shirt and show you the entire screen printing process from beginning to end. So the first thing you'll need is a screen. A lot of people will tell you you can build one, you probably could, but I highly encourage you guys just to purchase one. They're anywhere between $20 to $25 and you can either buy the wooden frame ones or the aluminum. Now when you buy these screens, they'll usually have numbers imprinted on them. In the beginning, stick with 110 or 156, they're very safe. There are mesh counts that go to 200, 230, 300 but those are for more detailed artwork later on but in the beginning stick with 110 or 156 next you will be degreasing your screen in other words cleaning it you just want to remove any dust particles or dirt particles off the screen so that you're working with a clean screen I have a washout booth but you don't need one I started off in my shower tub and then I moved out to my patio in a bucket but you can use your standard garden hose scrub brush or a sponge just make sure that brush is only designated to degrease the screen and not for anything else First, you're just gonna wet the screen, spray some of the degreaser on, then you're gonna scrub down the screen and the backside. Then you're gonna rinse out the entire screen. Make sure you hit the edges of the frame, the front and the backside as well. Afterwards, you're gonna dry your screen. You can either just let it air dry or you can put a fan on and let it dry a little quicker. Now, once the screen is dry, we're going to add emulsion on. In order to apply emulsion onto the screen, you will need a scoop coater. When it comes to the emulsion brand, there are a ton of different types of emulsions and a lot of different brands of emulsion. The one that I like to use is this brand right over here. Over the years of trying different types of emulsion, I found that this one to be the easiest to use, most forgivable, and easiest to clean as well. Emulsion is light sensitive, so you want to keep it out of light as much as possible. Now, when people first get started, they think that they need to be in a light light safe environment with a yellow bulb, zero UV light, and just complete darkness. But being exposed to a little bit of like a room light or your garage light is completely fine as long as it's not out in direct sunlight. Like the brand that I use is a lot more forgiving than others. I don't have a dark room, I coat all my screens in the light, and I've had zero problems over the years. Now when you pour the emulsion into the scoop coater, you make sure that you don't fill up more than half the amount you can fill into the scoop coater. First, you're gonna coat the outside of your screen. You're gonna tilt your screen 45 degree backwards and then you're gonna use the thin side of the scoop coater and press it against the mesh and let the emulsion slowly drip until it makes contact with the screen. Once it makes contact, you're gonna still push against the screen with your scoop coater and pull it up till you reach the top. Then you're gonna tilt the entire screen with the scoop coater 45 degrees the other way so that the emulsion is slowly going back into the scoop coater. So I'm gonna show you guys one more time. Screen tilted back, let the emulsion drop. Once it makes contact, you're gonna pull up. Then let the emulsion drip back down and scrape it off right there. Ooh, that's nice and that's satisfying. Every time you pull up to, you should hear a very satisfying zip. Then you're gonna flip the screen around and do the print side or the back side of the screen. Tilt the screen 45, scoop cutter against the screen. Once it makes contact, pull up and 45 degrees the other way till the emulsion gets back in, scrape and done. And then you have a coated screen. Normally you would do a one to one ratio. So you would do one outside, then one inside. In this case, I've done two on the outside and one on the inside for demonstration. That means that the stencil will be a little bit thicker because I added three coats in total. Next, you want the screen to dry, not standing sideways, but facing downwards. I'm using two containers to prop up my screen so that there's airflow on the bottom and top. If you have more than one screen, I recommend you trying to coat as many screens as possible during that session of coating screens. Here in this video, I'm coating about 20 plus screens and I like to do everything in one session and that way I can store everything together at once. Also make sure that when you're drying your screen, it's in a darker place. So the restroom is a great place. Your closet can be another place or uh, someone's bedroom when no one is there. Now the drying time really depends on where you live. If you live in a colder, more humid place, it'll take longer. If you live in a warmer, drier place, it'll dry a lot quicker. How you know if it's dried is just by touching both sides of the screen. And if it's completely dried and there's no emulsion stickiness, then you're good. Next, scrape off all the emulsion you didn't use into your emulsion container to save as much emulsion as possible. Then you're going to rinse off your scoop coater. Make sure you do this right away and don't let it dry because the moment it dries, it sticks and it stays there and you don't want that to happen. 
So next is going to be the artwork. I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as possible because this itself can be a whole separate video, which I'll do later on in the future, but you'll need a special coated transparency paper and you'll need a inkjet printer that can print black. For this demonstration, I'm gonna go to shutterstock.com and choose a free royalty-free image. Uh, Stella and I, we love birds and we also really love owls. So I'm gonna look at some owl photos. Let's see, owls. And uh, I really like this one. Cute owl cartoon. Yeah, let's go with this one. I love owls. I love what looks like coffee. It's download for free. So we're gonna go ahead and download that. Now, if you don't have a inkjet printer or transparency paper, you can go to a local print shop and ask them to print your design file onto a transparency paper. Just make sure when you look at your transparency image on a light source, that the black is opaque and that a lot of light is not going through. If you notice that it's really transparent, then print two transparency and then overlap them together so that you have a more opaque black transparency. If you don't have an inkjet printer, you can also just get a Sharpie and either write or draw out your design on it. And the Sharpie will be enough to block out the light. Next, you're gonna attach your transparency to your coded screen. I'm gonna add two pieces of tape onto the transparency facing upwards. So that way when I bring the screen down, the tape sticks onto the screen. Normally a design sets about three to four fingers from where the collar is. And that's where I like to set it from the top of the palette. I recommend getting a T-squared ruler so that you can make sure that your image is properly aligned and straight. Next, you're gonna expose your screen. Three ways you can do it. One is out in the sun. Two is by having a light source on top that hits the top of your screen. And three is by facing your image downwards and having the light hit from the bottom. The one that I use is a light box with a timer installed into it. Now, when you put your screen on top of the light box, there might be some gap between the glass and the screen. So in order to make sure that it's making complete contact, you want to put some sort of flat weight on top. In this case, I'm gonna be using my high school year and just a gallon bucket of water just to add some extra weight. I'm gonna let the screen expose. In my case, it takes about 30 to 40 seconds for it to expose. If you do it out in the sun, it might take about 10 to 15 minutes. If you do it with a light source on top, it could take up to eight to 10 minutes. Once it's done, you're gonna bring it over to your washout booth or your patio or your shower, wherever you do your washouts. Now, the moment you rinse it, you will notice your design being visible just a little bit. That's because you're breaking down the unexposed emulsion and you're gonna completely wash it out. You're gonna rinse your screen down with your garden hose until all the emulsion is washed out. Later on, if you get more serious, you can also use something called a pressure washer, which is very handy to have around, but it's not mandatory if you're just starting off, but really consider one later on. After you're done rinsing, just hold your screen up to a light source to make sure that you've washed out all the emulsion on your design, because if you don't, it's gonna cause more headaches when it comes to print production. Then let your screen dry. You can also use a fan to speed up the drying process. Next, you're going to align the screen to the center of the palette until you're satisfied. Once you are, lock it in. Next is the ink. You can choose any ink color that you want and put it on the screen and print it. For this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it simple and just use black ink. There's two types of inks. There's water-based and there's Plastisol ink. For this video, I'm gonna focus just on Plastisol. Plastisol ink is a lot easier to use. It's very friendly to use, but it requires a very specific drying method. The ink has to reach anywhere between 275 to 350 degrees for 20 to 30 seconds. It all depends on the ink brand. So whichever brand you use, read the instructions so that you are aware of the drying temperature. You're gonna need a spatula or a spoon to get some of the ink, and then you're gonna lay it down onto the screen. If you just load a shirt, the shirt's gonna have a lot of room to move. So in order for the shirt to stick onto the palette, you need to use some sort of adhesive. You can either use a spray adhesive meant for screen printing, don't get the ones at your craft store because those are very heavy, or liquid adhesive, or also known as liquid glue. For this demonstration, I'll use spray adhesive, but I personally like using liquid glue and I prefer to stick only with that. But if I'm printing like one to 10 shirts, I'll just use a spray adhesive because it's a lot quicker and it saves a lot more time. Now, once I load the shirt in, I'm going to pull it back until the collar reaches the edge of the palette. And that's because I set the design three to four fingers down from the top of the palette. So I'm gonna load it and slowly pull back until the collar meets the edge of the palette. That way the print is guaranteed to be printed three to four fingers down below from the collar. Squeegees. 
A squeegee is what you'll use to push the ink through the screen onto the shirt. There are wooden squeegees and there are aluminum squeegees. If you're just starting off, stick with the wooden ones. But I love the aluminum squeegees. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're easier to clean. They don't warp, they don't stain, they don't hurt your wrist as much, and they're just a lot cleaner and easier to use. There are two ways to print. There is the push method and there is the pull method. I'm going to show you the push method because it's a lot easier for most beginner printers and it has a lot less stress on your body. When you're just starting off, make sure that the squeegee is angled at a 45 degree angle. Make sure that you're not pushing too straight upwards or you're gonna have a lot of friction make sure it's not pushing too sideways or you're going to be depositing a lot more ink first you're going to lift up the screen just a little bit and then you're going to drag the ink from the bottom to the top of the screen this is also known as flooding what you're trying to do is you're trying to fill in all the gap in the stencil with ink so that you can push it through. When you flood the screen, you should still be able to see your image. If you cannot, that means that you're not flooding hard enough. Then at a 45 degree angle, you are going to push the squeegee, driving the ink through the screen, and you should hear a nice zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz